In this section of the lesson, we're going to be evaluating quantitative easing. However, first, we're going to have a bit of fun. So I'd like you to put yourself together a three by three bingo card grid. And we should have nine spaces. If you pause the video, fill each of those nine spaces with a key term relating to quantitative easing. Then restart the video when you're ready. Right, now you've got your nine key terms in your bingo grid. We're going to play bingo. Let's start bingo. So are you ready? Here comes the first one. Government bond. Here we go. Cross that off if that is on your grid. And next one. Asset purchases. Cross that one off. Fast and furious. We're going again. Monetary policy. Have you got that one? Cross it off if you have. Coupon value. Yield is next up in blue. Cross that off if you've got it. Money supply. The wealth effect. Well done if you've got that one. Liquidity trap. Excellent. Well done if you've got that one. Corporate bond is next up in green. Expansionary, a good word to know about quantitative easing. Interest rate. Depreciation. Unconventional, excellent news if you've got that one. Central bank, and last but not least, credit. Hopefully you've shouted bingo long ago. Let's look at some of the advantages of using quantitative easing. Well, at times like the uh, financial crisis or in the coronavirus crisis, it gives central banks an extra tool of monetary policy besides changing interest rates. And that is particularly important if we are in the liquidity trap and interest rates have stopped working effectively. QE increase, increases the size of the monetary base, and that helps lower the threat of price deflation. Without quantitative easing, the fall in real GDP would have been deeper and the rise in unemployment greater, as we saw from the evidence in the previous section. Lower long term interest rates have kept business confidence higher and given the commercial banking system extra deposits to use for lending. And quantitative easing can lead to a depreciation of the exchange rate, which helps to improve the price competitiveness of export industries. However, quantitative easing does have its disadvantages too. It can contribute to rising wealth inequality. This is because asset prices rise, so it can cause surging of house prices and housing rents or surging of share prices and bond prices. And this increases the gap between those who own those sort of assets and those who don't. But the rising house prices also worsens geographical mobility. An increase in the monetary base may well lead to inflationary pressure. If you want to know more about that point, ask your teacher about the quantity theory of money. Ultra low interest rates can distort the allocation of capital and also keep alive zombie companies. So this is a key criticism of Hayekian and Austrian school of thought. So it encourages firms to um, continue to function, even though under higher interest rate circumstances, they would cease to exist. And we call those companies zombie com companies. Low interest rates have reduced the annual incomes from pension funds, making life tougher for those who have savings or who rely on occupational pensions. So this has particularly affected those who have retired the older population. Some general points about quantitative easing. There are, of course, uncertain time lags. 
and the impact of quantitative easing on the real economy, it's taken some decade or so to see some of the effects of quantitative easing after the financial crisis. It takes a long time to work out exactly what happens. The Bank of England now is a major holder of UK government debt. It has an awful lot of those IOUs in its vaults. Some economists arguing for a green QE or a people's QE, and this is using quantitative easing to help fund green infrastructure, education, health care, social care, feeling that this is a much better way, putting, creating the money electronically and spending it on infrastructure, education and health and social care, rather than buying back bonds. QE has helped keep interest rates low, but are we now worried? Yes, we are. The economy is too dependent on cheap money. We've had cheap money for over a decade, more than a decade. And are we now a little bit too reliant on it? So on balance, here we are. We want you to decide. We'd like you to write a short journalistic style article arguing either that QE has been really effective and useful for the UK economy, or that QE has been a mistake. So choose one or the other. And in fact, very good practice would be to do both. So make one very much for and one very much against. But make sure you use real live data um, and make sure you put some graphs in there. Thank you for listening.